like a, you know, it was like a big bird swooping down. It has been a textbook flight, but the fate of the most expensive commercial aircraft ever built still hangs in the balance. Who won the World Series? Uh, the Yankees. New York does not need Concord. JFK and its residents do not need the Concord. While Concord is being checked over outside, its crew confront the press in Hangar 17. New York and for Concord. I'm told that the New York Yankees won the World Series last night after all that they have been through. And Concord's here today after all we've been through. And it has been a lot. New York is the city on the western side of the Atlantic for which Concord was designed. It's going to be devastating, devastating. This aircraft has blocked every hearing test it's had. The opening salvo of questions does not bode well for Concord. The question is, does Jean Frankie feel that people living around Kennedy have a right to be afraid and fear for the airplane? If they believe what they read about it, they have a right to be afraid of. But what I question is what they read about it. It's going to ruin our city. You know, we don't need the Concord. JFK doesn't need the Concord. The people of New York don't need the Concord. The average speed, therefore... While the flight crew face a barrage of questions, Concord's PR team execute their master plan to let the plane and its media critics stand face to face. With many journalists awestruck by their first look at Concord, the odds of it getting a favorable press start to shift in the airplane's favor. This is just a ploy by the airlines. Uh, well, the press is still interested, and, and it's all going to change. Now backed by Concord, the mood among the flight crew becomes more confident. Well, it's about the 600 landing I've done on the aircraft, and it looked like all the others. And uh, the runway looked like a runway to me. And to be honest with you, with the, I didn't fly a, a special approach for New York. I don't want to treat the people in New York any better than I treat the people in Toulouse, my hometown. <laughs> this is proven to be one of the world's noisiest aircraft, if not the noise. Concorde and its crew are holding up well under press scrutiny. But it still faces one crucial test that Carol is sure will vindicate her campaign. It's takeoff. What do you think will happen to takeoff tomorrow? I'm confident that tomorrow the noise monitors here will register very the high. The beat the meter business is not the object of the exercise. It is to satisfy the communities that we are going to be a good neighbor. Critics accuse Concorde of having the loudest takeoff of any civilian aircraft in service. If it registers higher than the legal limit of 112 decibels, Concord will be dragged through the American legal system for a second time. But even when Concord's afterburners are activated, the noise monitors are not even triggered. Concord finally passes its New York hearing test, silencing its critics. The anti-Concorde campaign may have stalled, but with all the press exposure she's gained, Carol Berman's political ambitions take off. In 1979, she's elected to the US Senate. After paying its way for 26 years on the transatlantic route, Concorde made its final landing at London Heathrow in 2003. With this revolutionary aircraft destined to become a museum exhibit, all hopes of future supersonic civilian flight remain grounded for the time being.